Hello students, this is Ms. Dalton and this video is over complex numbers. So up to this point um, in your math career, you have worked with the real numbers. Uh, if you remember real numbers, they're made up of rational and irrational, which rational numbers are made up of integers, natural numbers, whole numbers, and so what you're going to see now is that we have this old, whole other section. So we have real numbers, but then we also have what's called imaginary numbers. So the definition of an imaginary number is one based on the unit i. Now, where I, what i is, is i is the square root of a negative one. So we've always told you up to this point that when you, you can't take the square root of a negative. Well, you can take the square root of a negative, it's just that up to this point we've only been looking at real numbers. The square root of a negative is not a real number, it's called an imaginary number. So i is equal to the square root of negative 1, and i squared is equal to negative 1, because if I was to take the i and square it, then that would be taking the square root of negative 1 and squaring it. Well, if you remember, a square root and an exponent of 2, those are inverses of each other. So when you square i, you just get that negative 1. Okay? So you're going to have to use this because we're going to do some uh, mathematical operations with imaginary numbers. Now, you can use i to find roots of negative values. So now when we're trying to find the square root of negative 3, for example, we can split that up and say that's the square root of negative 1 times 3, and then the square root of negative 1 is i, so we put the i on the outside and we leave the square root of 3 under the radical. Now we also have what's called a complex number. A complex number is one that includes both a real number and an imaginary number. We write this in the form a plus bi. And so what, that, what that's going to be is that the a, the front part, is our real number. And the back part, so the plus bi, that is our imaginary. So I'm just going to abbreviate that because I'm running out of room. So imaginary. So first we're going to look at what you need to do when you're adding and subtracting complex numbers. And so what you're going to do is when you add and subtract, you want to just combine like terms. The imaginary, you'll combine all the imaginaries, and you'll combine all the reals. Okay, so in this first example, we have 7 minus 6i, and we're going to subtract the complex number 3 minus 6i. So treat this just like you would a normal um, expression that has a variable in it. First thing you'd want to do is you'd want to distribute that negative through, or the minus through. So you're really going to have 7 minus 6i, and I'm going to make my i's with that little curve on the end, and then minus 3, and then plus 6i. And so then you just look for like terms. So my 7 minus 3, those are like terms, so that's 4. And then your imaginary numbers, negative 6i plus 6i, that's going to cancel, and so your final answer is just 4. Okay, let's look at our next example. Uh, we have negative 4 minus the complex number 1 plus i, minus the complex number 5 plus 9i. Again, when you, have, when you are subtracting, it's, you want to think about distributing that negative 1. So you're going to distribute it here, but I'm also going to distribute the negative into that second parenthesis. So we're going to have the negative 4. We're just going to bring that down. 
then we're going to have minus 1 minus i and then minus 5 minus 9i. And so then at this point you want to look at your um, common terms. Negative 4 minus 1 minus 5. So that's going to give you negative 10. And then your imaginary pieces are negative i minus 9i. So that's going to give you negative 10i. So the answer is negative 10 minus 10i. Okay. And again, we usually write a complex number with the real number first and then the imaginary number second. Okay, multiplying complex numbers. You're going to use the distributive property or the expanded distributive property and then simplify. And then you also want to remember that i squared is equal to negative 1 when you're simplifying. So if you have an i squared in your answer, you're not completely simplified. Okay, so let's see what this is going to look like. So in our first example, we have 4i times negative 6 plus i. So we're going to distribute. And so we've got 4i times negative 6, that's negative 24i. Then 4i times a positive i is a positive 4i squared. Okay, so we have, oh sorry, I forgot to put the square there. Let me do that. Okay, so now we have this i squared, okay? So every time you have an i squared, you need to remember that an i squared is equal to negative 1. So I'm going to mark that out, and in its place, I'm going to put a negative 1. So then, simplify it further. So now we have negative 24i, and then plus 4 times negative 1, which is really just going to be a minus 4. Now don't leave it like that because you do want to put your real number first, so that's going to be negative 4 minus 24i. Okay, let's look at this next example. Okay, in this next example we have 9 minus 2i getting multiplied by negative 4 plus 7i. Okay, so we're going to do the expanded distribution, or some of you might like to call this FOIL. We're going to do 9 times negative 4. That gives you that negative 36. Then we're going to do 9 times 7i, which gives you plus 63i. Then we're going to take the negative 2i and distribute it to the negative 4, which gives us a positive 8i. And then negative 2i times a positive 7i is minus 14i squared. At this point, you'll combine your like terms, but before I do that, Let's go ahead and change this i squared. Let's change it to a negative 1. Okay, so now I'll have negative 36. I'll bring that down. I can go ahead and combine the 63i plus 8i. So that gives me 71i. And then negative 14 times a negative 1 is going to give you a positive 14. So then at this point, I've got more like terms that I can combine. And go ahead and write your real numbers first. So negative 36 plus 14 is negative 22. So that will come first, and then I'll put my imaginary plus 71i. answer. 
Okay, for these next examples, I want you to go ahead and try it. So pause the video, you try it, and then when you're ready to check your answer, go ahead and press play. Okay, check your answer, see if you got it right. For the first one, you should have gotten 3 plus 6i. Um, hopefully you recognize that this was an addition problem, not a multiplication, and that can sometimes throw people for a loop, so be careful of that. Try not to work through it too fast and just see parentheses and then immediately start multiplying. If it's separated with a plus sign, then you need to make sure you're just adding, so you're just collecting like terms. In the second example, we are multiplying because the parentheses are right beside each other, and so you'll go ahead and do the double distribution. And then don't forget to change the i squared to a negative 1 and keep simplifying. So your final answer should have been 13 minus 3i. 13, sorry, 13 minus 13i.